Did you hear the didgeridoo call? <laughs> we are here. You are awake with us this early morning, um, Earth Day. Yes, it's exciting. I was I was going online and looking at all the companies that are uh, doing Earth Day. I love how they do different it. things. Yeah. One out of three hundred sixty days a year. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Today's a good day to do it. <laughs> yeah, it's like uh, Reebok had one um, where uh, this was really cool, where it was um, like the shoe. And then it had like trees planting around it and then leaves swirling all around the shoe. Is the shoe biodegradable? But it's the shoe, yeah. Is the shoe, what material is the shoe made What's the shoe made out of? Yeah, exactly. (laughs) How much energy went into fusing the sole of that shoe? (laughs) Yes, yeah. Vulcanized rubber. (laughs) Where was it made at? What factory? Yeah. Human rights. How many shipping containers had to go across the ocean to pick it up? How many people were in those shipping containers? <laughs> yeah, that's, <laughs> that's exactly right. <laughs> that's uh, I was reading about human trafficking the other day and how, how much of a rise it is. You read the most pleasant stuff. I know. Yeah, I'm constantly reading. Um, I get these Google alerts all the time on like on the big seven. Yeah. So there's just constant. I mean, it's the globe is just well, you're, you're moving. Well, reading right. So you get you're inundated with all this information. Um, tell tell me about reading. What does that mean to you? I, I think, I don't know, when I was little, I started to read. I, I but The first thing that got me excited for books was uh, Hardy Boys. Mm, yeah, and absolutely. And so I went to a flea market. They used to have these back in the day. And <laughs> have you ever heard of flea markets? Yeah, flea market Some people is. aren't going to even know what that is. <laughs> like, Fleas, what is that? aren't they like I've never dogs? seen a flea market on TikTok. <laughs> I don't know what that is. You know, but they're basically people would just all meet <clears> together. A community would come together like a garage sale and they would sell things. But there was this whole box of like 25 Hardy Boy books. And um, I bought the box for like, I don't know, two or three bucks or something. Oh, yeah. And I went home and then there was these mystery books. You robbed them. And there was like these kids, teenage boys, and they could go and solve mysteries. And there was like all kinds of craziness that went on. And I was just like, th- I can open a book, lay in my bed, and then a whole nother world comes to me. Okay. And so it began to like, I was like, well, what else can I read? So then I became like this, and I've been that way ever since. I just always like to read. I, I don't know why. It's, it's, I mean, you read a ton too. Yeah, I mean, we're surrounded by books. Yeah, I was never... Um, so I read a lot when I was younger. And then when I went to school, I was off-put by reading because of what they told me to read. Mm. It usually kills people's interest. So on our Western, um, the, the mass amount of forced reading and then forced memorization mm-hmm. for an educational system. You can't, do you think that was a part of that? Oh, like, it's 100% a big, a big part of it. I remember, I retain a lot more. I have a pretty excellent memory. And I retain a lot more when it's something I'm actually interested in. And I define my interest dependent on how much focus I have on something. Mm. And when I can have focus, that means I can have critical thinking. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. So if I can have focus on an attentive, you know, attentively focus on a subject that I care about, I can look at it critically also. It's easier for me to challenge the perspective of mine. So much like when you're reading the Hardy books, it's like, oh, it bring me into this other world. Well, I'm, when I'm reading something, I'm brought into the mind of that other individual. Actually, I don't prefer fiction. I read a lot of nonfiction, yeah, like textbooks, all stuff like that. Right. Um, so when I'm, when I'm looking at that, it allows me to be critical. I look through it. I notate on everything. I take my time. There's, there's a, you have to be patient with yourself and you have to be patient with the author. Every time I open up a new book, I've, been, I, I've studied the previous author so much in the way they write that opening up a new one is like a whole new flavor of conversation. I have to actually get accustomed in my mind to the way that that person carries their speech. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. So if my ability to retain their information, I'm going to actually have to go back. And it's only about halfway through the book to actually become fluent in Mm. listening to the way they're actually delivering information to Mm. me. So the first half is actually longer for me to read than the second half of the book because I'm adjusting to that person's perspective. And once I've adjusted to it, then I can test it. And as I note take from one book, I comparatively analyze it against another. How does this person say against this? Here to here. And most of the time, I follow my books through authors. One author cites another one. So I go from author to author to author to author to author. I'm like, oh, okay, this is really interesting. And then you can start to see the differences. And you can be extremely critical of the perspectives. And you can work through, oh, this works. Or this well, a lot of work. authors will give you the opposite perspective um, if, they're, if they're a good author. And that's something, um, this is a beautiful part about when I really realized in my 20s about books 
is when you have an author and they study something for 10, 15, 20 years, they're condensing it down to two, three, four, 500 pages. Right. There's literally hundreds of hours of research and study that they've done. They've rewrote the manuscripts. Jordan Peterson talks about this maps of meaning in his book, whether you agree or disagree with them, it doesn't matter. But he said this, it took him like 17 years to write the book. And each sentence he rewrote 70 times. I don't, I don't doubt so, that. So each sentence is super dense. Yeah, because every time you go to write a sentence, you're like, my gosh, my perspective has changed. And yeah. then you go back and you're like, I got to rewrite this whole thing because yeah. I don't actually think like that anymore. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> but when you know that now, I, but when you, you look at that book and it's like, every sentence you read, you're like, holy smokes, it's too in depth. I'm like too, it's almost like, it's too intense. You know what I mean? That has so, value for me. Yes, for you. Yeah. But I mean, he, but now that I know that when I read the book, once you know the author, do a little bit of research on who the author is and where they're coming from, what country they came from. Right. Um, you know, do we have Google, you know, search about the book and the author. Now that I know that when I read it, now I have a whole different perspective on the author and what they tried to accomplish. I mean, if a book took 17 years. Why do you think it was can't? rewritten over to change words to make sure, make sure it's absolutely you know, in his mind, he probably wouldn't say it was perfect, but it was as, perfect for as him. close to that as he could. But like what you were saying, and I think is really important, and why, and maybe you can explain this, why books create critical thinking. Yeah, so let's look at the definition of critical thinking. Uh, critical thinking is an intellectually disciplined process of actively and skillfully conceptualizing, applying, analyzing, synthesizing, and or evaluating information gathered from, generated by, observed experience, reflection, reasoning, or communication as a guide for action. I'm going to take all of the experiences of my life, all of my learnings, all of the perspectives. I'm going to fuse them together and I'm going to apply that through constant daily testing or through a series of thought, critical thought, taking that attention to say, does this work? I'm actually testing ideas mm. off of experience. Mm. And that helps you refine. And so that what it does is it actually, it's, it's a, they say it's a disciplined process because it requires patience. I'm going to have to take the time to focus on this one, not jump to the next Instagram post, not jump to the next Facebook news feed after I've read one sentence and say, this is the whole article. Well, read the last part of that, the very last part. That, this, that explains this. Generated by... Observation, experience, reflection, reasoning, or communication as a guide to action. So how are people acting now with what they're reading online? Well, how they're acting, they're acting like they've taken one sentence and they apply that to all of reality. And when then they and then no and then the algorithm is feeding that bias. It feeds over and over and over again. Yeah. And then you're reading a meme real quick which takes you 5 seconds, then you see another picture of the same thing emotionally with, reinforces with, with, with all another of it. with another little sentence. So it's just you're just getting inundated mm -hmm. by this bias. Correct. If you even go on, you know, Google Scholar or whatever it is and you're looking up scholarly articles, if you look up one that's been cited, it's going to serve you up another one. Mm -hmm. And it goes to reinforce the same research data, but the guy who's against the grain never gets read, never gets cited. And, and that's sad that they don't do that, that they have a... I think there's a new news app that does that, that says here's this perspective and here's this perspective. That's how it should be. You know, and that's how it should be. And, and that's critical thinking. It's saying, okay, yeah, I agree with this person, but then at the same time I need to... Read. I want to also read the book that goes uh, against this, uh, not the author, because we, we always take positions and tie them into people and then go against the person. Correct. And then we start attacking each other as humans. Yeah. <laughs> You're hu humans. Just because I have a different perspective than you do on something doesn't mean I'm a bad human. Doesn't mean you're a bad human. <laughs> the other person may just not have rationally thought it through to the end. A lot of people don't think things through to the end. Are, but it's okay to have different opinions. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. You know what I do prefer? I do prefer people that have opinions with great logic and rationale. Yes, yes, of course. If I just have some emotional opinion with no basis, I'm like, that's whacked. But, I mean, you can get, I guarantee you, you can pull 100 people into a room that, that are extremely intelligent, and they're going to have different opinions. Yeah. And they're going to be able to logically defend their opinion and it's going to sound halfway good to you and that's what i love i've i've gone on youtube and i've done that so many times where i say okay 
what is the what is the far right perspective? What is the centrist perspective? What is the far left perspective? What is a progressive, a libertarian, an anarchist, anarchist perspective? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. There, yeah. <laughs> I was going down the slide. <laughs> Michael Malice, Michael Malice, Michael Malice. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> he's funny. I, I, you guys, whether you agree or disagree with him, he's a super funny guy. He's like comedian too. But um, do you know what critical thinking requires? You're going down this yeah, list, go ahead. You're, reading, you're reading all these sides, okay? You understand that people have opinions. You recognize they're human beings. Critical thinking requires responsibility. Ooh. It requires responsibility. No, Alex. <laughs> we don't want to be responsible. We want somebody else. You want <laughs> to do that for us. You know why? Because critical thinking removes belief. I'm thinking for myself. I'm finding the facts and testing them against my own experience. I am responsible for doing that. You should not let somebody else tell you how to think. No, I'll just retweet it. If you have a bunch of data, <laughs> right, that's right. in front of you, don't have somebody else just come in and tell you what this data means. Go look at the raw data and go test it for yourself. It's your responsibility. Well, this has been the problem when, when, and we've talked about this on just about every episode. Yeah. This has been the problem when we look at data transparency Mm -hmm. and, and we see a bias that comes into data, same scenario that's happening now. And then it's fed to all the other teams that are on the corporation. And then they're making decisions based off of this false sense of security that they're getting from this biased data. Think about us at Turtle. <laughs> we're like, uh, you have your data. We have we have multiple data checks. Yeah. And we're always hammering each other like, that data's not legit. Right. We're all on the same team. We all respect one another. But we're all like, why are there discrepancies in this data? Rather than someone saying, oh, here's the report and we all act upon it. Mm-hmm. Well, here are all multiple reports and here's the raw data to go with it. Let's look at this. Why is this different? You have to do that. You have to be responsible for that testing. That's your own self-monitoring. Mm-hmm. Don't let someone just hand something to you and you just believe it. Well, influence, it, influence it's, you don't know the influence that came behind that report. Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, do, you don't know. I mean, we can go like super crazy and throw Epstein out there, you know, like in the sense of him buying off people. Yep. And then scientists and, and all different, you know, political leaders is all proven. And and then, you know, well, you know, we gave you a million dollars last year. Maybe, you know, th- I don't think that should be. You, you know, there's a lot of influence like that that happens behind closed doors. It all reminds the, me. The smoking of the cigar and, you oh, know. yeah. I think for the betterment of the economy, I, I, you know, that that paper, <laughs> I read that paper that you wrote. And I think it should maybe kind of go in this direction a little bit. <laughs> yeah, you you really have, even when we talked to Avi Lowe about this. Yes. Your, your idea of prestige and title is what drives you, not your critical thinking for most scientists. Mm, yes job security yes they don't want to test the grain that's not a real scientist yeah and he talked about that openly you need to be your own scientist yes be your own be <laughs> yas yas right be yas yas what was it what was that the one with the it was big, like be back, back to big like yeah, yeah. <laughs> be yas back to big you know but i mean when we look at critical thinking and taking personal responsibility because I want to end it in this. I think this is really good. What you're talking about, the word responsibility. I encourage people to go like, I, I've done this and it works really well. And, and I've heard lots of people talk about this and go to your local bookstore, go just grab some books that have cool covers on them. Yeah. This seems shallow, but this works. Grab some books that has cool colors, go sit down somewhere and go through them for two or three pages and see if any of them interest you. Yeah. If you haven't read in a long time, because there's a lot of people that don't read at all. Generation Z, they were talking about, they just read online, you know, with posts and stuff like that. TikTok, and, mm. which is even shorter, you know, that's like three words. <laughs> there's no attention span. You can't have critical thought in five seconds. Because I guarantee you, if you read, there's books that I've read when I was in my teens and 20s that I can still remember pretty deeply. Mm. They've impacted me. A couple of fiction books that I've read, too. I don't read a lot of fiction, but a couple of fiction books that I've read, and I'm like, I, I can remember the plot line, the story. That's an amazing writer. Yeah. That can do something like that. I still remember the book Dune. Yes. Yeah. Uh, that, great. If that sci fi book came out, I don't know. Uh, there's I, a new Dune movie coming 40, out. 40, 50 years ago? Did you see the preview of that? I can't wait to see that. <laughs> I think it's got the, uh, oh, who's the, all the girls like? He's uh, Aquaman. Oh, yeah. He's in there. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's a cool huge. dude. Yeah. But what about uh, um, whenever you look at uh, 
books? Because I know you like hard physical books. I've talked about this. Before. Yeah, yeah. There's a um, and we've talked about when you type on a keyboard, it doesn't have the same um, electrostimulus connection that you find with the neurons in the brain that fire up, as opposed to when you write something by hand. So when you read digitally, it's different than actually having a book and holding it and taking ownership of it. Mm, yes. There's a, there's a conceptual difference. Like if you're owning your thoughts, that's for you. Well, own the book. Hold on to the book. Claim right to that book for that moment. All right? And it's going to change that connection and actually how you create a relationship with the information. Yeah, and I have, uh, um, I, I read a lot. Uh, I read, I have books we can see that and then uh number two i use the kindle a lot but they have like apps now that really cool apps it's this technology like they have this one app that i have and it will send you every day a book that you've read the highlights that you highlighted of that That's book cool. that may have been like a year ago so now you can just kind of Oh, I remember that book. And then you just read the That's where a, you highlighted it. <laughs> That's a neat app. I have to go back to my notebooks that I, read. I <laughs> yeah, do all yeah. mine by hand. <laughs> yeah, you do them by hand. But this is just taking data. And this is something, th and it would be interesting to get this guy that invented the app or who, whoever invented it, this team. And it would be cool to kind of get him on our podcast because this is something that can help humanity. Yeah, I, I think um, in the digital sense of looking at information, it allows us for quick reference. Mm, yes. But when you need to take a step beyond quick reference, it's going to take critical thinking. It takes patience and time. And, and I, I like what you said about, I take a yellow legal pad, but the writing does do something. Even if you're watching a TED Talk or a video or you're watching a YouTube video online, I'll do that. I'll, if I'm watching a YouTube video, I, I do. if, if I want to learn from it, I sit there and I take notes. Yeah. And, and everybody's done that. We all did that at school. Um, I, don't, I don't know why, but having that, you know, pen and paper. I don't notes. think no matter how advanced we get, no matter how advanced, I don't think it will ever go away. No. I do not think a writing instrument and a, and a pad or whatever it might be will ever go away. It will always be there. I, I, well, I mean, like they said, Pixar, the greatest those greatest movies, you know, those cartoons. Yeah. They were sitting in a um, uh, cafe for lunch and they sketched out on a napkin like Lion King. It sketches, the top five, uh, Toy Story. Slaps, dude. Toy Story, Lion King. They came up with the five. Know, is Lion King on Pixar? I don't even know. Uh, yeah, but they came up with the five biggest. What, Monsters, Inc.? Yeah, all of those. The, like the biggest five movies. They yeah. just came up with them like sitting there at lunch and said, let's make this one. Let's make this one. And then they talked about it and they used a pen and a napkin. Yeah, it, it's pen all, and paper. Oh, gosh. It's, it's really cool. They take a thought and put it onto reality. Yeah. You know, turn it onto something physical. And, um. You know, whether you're reading a book or you see a news article online or you're dealing with data, make sure that you have critical thinking. Don't come into it with a state of belief. Don't let someone tell you what the facts are. Go look at the facts for yourself. And responsibility. Mm. Whenever we look at, I want to close this out with Tartle. How can you as an individual be responsible by signing up for Tartle? Well, being responsible by signing up for Tartle says, I'm going to critically think about my data. I'm going to put it in something where I can share it truthfully with others so they can critically think on it and I can earn from it. If you critically think about that process, it's very beneficial to both parties. It's probably something you should jump in on. The logic makes sense. It's rational. And guess what? It's self-monitored, it's self-disciplined, and it's self-corrective thinking every time I interact with my data. Perfect.